I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegon. I'm Ashley Chancellor. This is Collateral Cinema. Welcome to Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters, where we focus on good movies, bad movies, and everything else in between in the world of cinema. We're podcasting straight from somewhere in South Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast. So whatever you have, be it dabs, be it blunts, be it bongs, be it joints, smoke it if you've got it. Hello, everybody, and hello, guys. How are y'all doing? Oh, we're fine. Uh, just so you know, I don't actually smoke weed because I'm trying to get acting jobs, so this is just my cover. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> if, any, if anybody has any acting jobs, throw it uh, Robert's way. Please, I mean, and thank you. Yeah, certainly. I, I mean, he, he is waiting. He wants to get his credits on IMDb, which... It will happen. I'm sorry. I don't know why you don't just start an IMDb page. No, I told I your mean, brother to shit. come home, to come over to my house, and we'll just start a page on his computer. Just yeah, My brother, least, Dakota? Yeah, yeah, yeah. bring his computer over, but, you know. Speaking of which, where is Dakota? Just help me put a page together, man. Put a Dakota yeah. is not with us because no. apparently his allergies are messing with him too much I or know. something. I know. I was rhetorical. Obviously, I know where Dakota is. I'm yeah, brother, yeah. But, uh, I mean, but, but we, sh- we should at least, you know, tell everybody why he's absent. Yeah. You know. R.I.P. Dakota. <laughs> this motherfucker. And by the way, we just heard earlier on Facebook, I believe, that the actor Rip Torn from Men in Black, he was on Freddy Got Fingered, which we reviewed and uh-huh. analyzed. He, he passed away today. He's 88, right? He was 88, 88 years, old. years old. Wow. I mean, that, that was quite a gut punch. I mean, I mean, the character of Gordy's dad, it's like, that's like a monumental character for me and i mean right you have a personal it, it, connection to that yeah of course because you know, it reminds me of my dad that's a your lot, father you know yeah, right it's like dad, holy dude. fuck man it's like kind of like your dad passing away in a way not really no okay <laughs> <laughs> no like, not really. better than your dad i don't know oh yeah Rick way better oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your, your dad's interesting oh he um, is i mean he is. he's told us his his dipstick story twice oh please don't <laughs> don't go there man well anyway we are here for a very specific reason. This is a special bonus indie review episode, and we are reviewing the 2019 comedy gangster movie, I guess. I guess it's kind of a crime movie a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. It's called Chasing Molly, written by Shelley Pack. It's directed by... I. I believe his name is Josh Sutherland. Yeah, Josh Sutherland. Sutherland. Yep. And it stars Kurt Angle and Felicia Day and Jim Cashman and quite a few other people as well, right? Ooh, Mark something. Was that progressive guy, dude? Yeah. I, I, I forgot his last I name. Mark, I don't think that's Mark the guy from the progressive that's video. Him, bro. Are you sure? That's Are him. you sure? I saw the, the progressive ads, we should say. One of them insurance videos, he was sitting there in one of the new commercials. <laughs> I swear to God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, who, who knows? I mean, I didn't see it on his IMDb, but... No. No, I mean... I just saw a commercial recently. And yeah. It, it looked like an insurance... Uh, yeah, but, I mean, this movie was very, very entertaining and rather charming, I thought. Like, what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. Um, There's kind of this no... Bo- no bars... Ho- what is the phrase? No called? holds barred. No holds no barred. Holds barred. <laughs> which I means, can't think of which it. Which means anything now, goes. No, no. Yeah. You re- you realize that we're not editing this episode, and that's yeah. going Fuck. to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I, I couldn't think of it. I was yeah. like, no, no, no holds barred comedy. Just use. You know yeah, what I mean? Wrestling term. No and, holds barred. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't hold back. Is what I mean. Is what I mean to say. And it's just kind of always in your face. I mean, you've got. Um, I can taste the tip of my. I can taste the tip, right? I can taste the tip. <laughs> I can taste the tip. <laughs> Dude, I literally played this movie. I did not know what I was getting to. I knew nothing about this movie. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I play this movie in front of my family, my dad and my grandmother. Oh god! And then this motherfucker starts it? saying, "I can taste the tip." <laughs> He's saying, "I can suck my own dick." I can suck. I'm like, what? <laughs> not, not, not around my grandmother. Yeah, we're gonna Come turn on. this off. Turn it off. Yeah. Oh fuck, man! That, that that's why you need to wear headphones or earphones whenever you're. Dakota and I were going to watch it together, so I just figured we'd watch it on the the big screen downstairs. (laughs) 
Wow. I had no idea. I should have looked into it, I guess. Like, wow. I'm sure your mom wasn't happy. <laughs> but that was interesting. I came into this with a completely clear slate. and It was kind of the same for you guys, right? Oh, very much. I mean, we so, were approached yeah. by... Oh, was it one of the producers? It, it was, a, I believe she's a writer and producer and actress, actress. Shelly Pack. Oh, Shelly Pack, yeah. Sorry, that, yeah. She plays the... Well, she plays the lead role. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's a lead role. Molly. She's Molly, yeah. Yeah. No, how does that correlate to the title, though? I, I wasn't quite sure. Chasing it's, Molly. She's kind of it, chasing her, her partner, actually. Because she's but, running around the city with those pills. Yeah, those pills, the, that's Molly. That's right. MDMAs. So yeah. it's kind of, there's kind of that um, double entendre there. A little bit, yeah. It's actually pretty clever if you think about it. So her name I mean, is Molly, and it's called. And, and, and the movie's about Molly, and she's yeah. chasing Molly. Yeah, yeah. Is it kind kind of interesting when you get, break it down like that? Chasing right? Lego pills, or yeah, yeah. The the pills that they steal, they steal this from Kurt Angle's character. We don't want to give too much away, but we're going to at least give the basic premise. Yeah, they steal some pills from Kurt Angle, and then uh, Atticus is he's uh, kidnapped. And Molly has to find a way to get him back. Yeah, that's good. That's the basic I mean, premise. That, that's the basic premise, right? We there. Just and, it, and it involves MDMA. And, and <laughs> Molly and Atticus are introduced as these fake ghost hunters, right? Yeah, they're fake ghost hunters. They're they're yeah. they're scam artists. They're con artists. And what they do is is they they go into homes and they try to uh, convince people that you know people that people actually they go to people who are already convinced that they're haunted. Yeah, and, and we, they, they pretend to, to. Yeah, we 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 won't say what happens in those scenes, but well, that's kind of that's in the very, trailer, I think. Yeah, well, but they're very very fun, and it actually sets up the premise of the movie rather quickly. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. why the only reason why I'm gonna I was willing to go into that is that yeah, it, that, yeah. I mean, that sets up the premise. That's where their characters start off is is their con artists. Yeah, that are, yeah, that yeah. are faking uh, cleansing ghosts. Yeah, um, and then of course they come across the teapot. With the Molly in it, and then that sets sets the story up. Yeah, that's what kicks off the tale, right? And this tale is very much a character driven movie. It's character driven and dialogue driven in so many ways. I mean, there's so many interesting characters in this movie, not least of which is Molly and Ad- Atticus themselves. Yeah, they kind of had dynamic personas, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, they they are obviously somebody who. Uh, there are people who have known each other for a very long time. They have a pre-existing relationship. I mean, we never see how they come together or how they start doing what they're doing. But, I mean, it leads to some really, really interesting scenarios, like especially after the initial kidnapping. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and the movie primarily focuses actually on Molly. Yeah, she she's the primary focus. She's the one that has to run through hoops in order to get her like friend back. What does this movie remind you of? We just got out of one of these movies. Yeah, which yeah. is Pineapple Express, right? It, yeah, it has <laughs> it kind of has a little bit of a vibe like that, right? Yeah, I could see that. Exactly, dude. Yeah, cuz that that's another character in dialogue driven movie that also has a little bit of a drug thing going with it. Running around the city. With your head cut off. Yeah, but yeah. that's that's much more of an action movie than this. Yeah. This is very much a, uh, in some ways, almost a situational comedy in some ways. Like 21 yeah. or, or maybe like a sketch, kind of sketch comedy like a little bit. And doesn't it, doesn't yeah. it feel a little bit 90s? It feels very 90s, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, it's got it's got that late nineties, early two thousands vibe. You yeah. know, like like it, it reminded me a lot of. Especially pacing wise, you know, for some reason, stoner comedies like what we've done on this podcast, like we just brought up Pineapple Express, but also like How High and uh, Half Baked, very uh, much. It's like those are very fun movies. And it reminds me of like TV shows out of like 2008 and the early yeah, like, yeah. 2012, like Workaholics in Philadelphia. And, know, and, like, and what I love about this movie is that the pacing and the dialogue, it's just a mile a minute. It just keeps going and going and going, but it never drags you down you know it yeah. never drags it never drags the movie down. remember uh 21 jump street dude like something like that <laughs> it is like 21 jump street right and horrible bosses that's what and i even, thought even the, the drug connection there i, yeah. I can't exactly. i can't really say anything about 21 jump street because yeah, i haven't it. really seen them i got both of them dude yeah. we'll watch them yeah but I, I can say I did watch Horrible Bosses, which is uh, that's a movie we're gonna have to do because I don't know how to feel about that one really. You gotta watch the second one too. You no, know, yeah, we're we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to do that movie sometime. But but back to chasing Molly. Back yeah. to chasing Molly. I mean, I really like how 
you can literally sit there and just be watching this movie, getting into it, and before you know it, 35, 40 minutes have passed, and almost an hour has passed, and it's like, wow, it's like, this movie really doesn't uh, have a whole lot of filler to it. No, the plot keeps moving forward. Yeah. It, 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 every scene is, um, well, I don't want to say significant, because you know, it, it is kind of like this bullshit comedy kind of thing going improv, on. Yeah, there's improv, it, it's, right? It's very stream of conscience-like in the yeah. way. Yeah, improv. That's a but, really good skill. I mean, yeah. Jesus, not many people can be so catty. and Like the, the cops, right? Oh, the yeah, the, the two cops in the movie, those characters are awesome. I I I, I, I love them, and it's like, I mean, they, they they don't even come into play until later on in the movie. But th- their scenes, I mean, they're outside of the actual story for a little while, but and and they have kind of a passing, like tangential link to the story. Like, but like they're so compelling in their own right that they they don't feel too out of place. I mean, you actually kind of you're like, okay, these guys are cool. It's like, I mean, they're a little... Uh, Rehearsing lines from a play. Yeah, yeah I two, mean... The two it, cops that are actors. Right? It, 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 that's that's an interesting angle to them, and it lends well to the humor. Yeah, and uh, apparently that's Officer Reyes, played by Mike Rose. Okay. And uh, Officer Brock, played by Drew Droge? Droge? I don't know. Yeah, <clears throat> but th- they were a lot of fun. Like, I mean, th- they actually helped kind of... Give a little bit of a of a respite to that, the, the actual co- story. The two cops scene. That's remember like a super bad thing, right? Yeah, may, that, that maybe funny, may, dude. yeah, maybe it is a little reference to super bad or something like it's that. Like, I'm not and, really sure. And maybe it, Ms., maybe Miss Pat can correct us on that. <laughs> and it it keeps cycling back to them. It's shifting back and forth between the main plot and these two cops for a while. Once they're introduced. Mm-hmm. But you have no idea why. You're like, yeah. who are these two cops? What do they have to do with the story? But, and then when they, you, you you expect they're going to come into it, but when they do, it's it's only tangential, isn't it? But and yeah, and but it never feels superfluous in any way. No, no. I mean, they they they're definitely there. They they have some importance to the plot, but they're still very enjoyable characters in their own right. I mean, if they if, if there would have been like a short film of just them doing that, that would have been great. It was even. entertaining. It yeah, was, it was really yeah. entertaining. That could be. Maybe an Amazon Prime show, maybe. Yeah, it, it could be. Like those I mean, those characters could almost like spin off from this. Oh, and then movie a little bit. There's other characters like uh, Rawhide. Rawhide is really cool, man. He he's the taste of tip guy, right? T- uh, yeah, you can taste the tip. Oh Curtis man, Curtis Pickett plays him. Oh, he is he is so much fun. I I love I love that character. Rawhide. He's he's just he's just so down for everything. <laughs> like I, I love it. He he doesn't give a fuck, he and I can respect that. He doesn't give a fuck. Um, there's Skullfucker. Oh, Skullfucker, to me, along with the two cops, they fucking stole, he fucking stole this movie from me. He did, didn't he? Oh, he was so perfect. Like, when he's <laughs> when he has that fucking, uh, that, that phone call, we're not, once again, we're not going to say what he says in it, but we're, we, we want people to be surprised by it, but it's very vulgar, and it's really, really hilarious. I love it. It's like this this dad character, right? Yeah. And then, but then, like, I don't know. I kind of see myself there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, but not, I don't not quite know. to his level. But this dad character, but like, he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, and he does things. But he, he for... cares about his kids. Yeah. But like, when he's on the phone with someone else, he just shouts obscenities. Yeah, yeah, th- 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 and that makes for a really awkward but really hilarious scene. But yeah, it's, you can tell so he actually fun. cares for his kids. I don't know. I, I guess I felt that. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's still a dad, but I mean, like I'm a dad, I'm a new dad, right? Yeah, and and now like I have this like double life as like a podcaster where you know I talk about being on a 420 friendly podcast and cuss about movies. <laughs> I don't know; it, it almost <laughs> seems like juxtaposed, but I mean, it's just that's just me. Hey, just because you're on a 420 friendly podcast doesn't necessarily mean you partake. I, I'll go ahead and put that out there. Ooh, yeah, yeah. We 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 are totally open to non-smokers as well. Yeah. So, I mean. I, I can't really do it this anymore. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> really. I, I was a kid man. once upon a time, and yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Robert. <laughs> once upon a time in Hollywood. <laughs> but another interesting character from this movie, Rodney. Like, I mean, he is very, very distinct, right? And th- I mean, that that's what's cool about a lot of the characters in the movie. They're very distinctive, and they stand out. In Rodney. so many ways, I'm yeah. Trying to remember who that is. He was the bald guy who was looking for some 
some tail. That's what he was pretty much looking for. He was looking, you know, the grapefruit guy. Oh yeah, yeah, Rodney. That duh, because he says I, I think he talks in, about himself in third person yeah, the that, whole that, time. That, that's in the trailer, right? Is, yeah, yeah. I Rodney's don't know why in, I didn't think about that. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney is in the trailer. The grapefruit so, guy. He is yeah. in the trailer, and and that was hilarious. And that was a fun scene. I mean, once that's again, a real video. Not, yeah, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get too far into this actual scene itself, but yeah, there is an actual YouTube video involved in there. It's funny, and you could totally look it up. Just once once you see it, you'll know what it is. Yeah, Bo and I looked it up. Just yeah, because I was like, I think I've seen that video before. Yeah, we, 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 we'll let that be a surprise. But I mean, you look for it. You'll you'll just know it when you see it. Like yeah. it's really cool. What about uh, Kurt Angle himself? His Kurt character, Angle's Mr. character Black. is so. He's so raw and just angry, and I love it. You know, if, who he reminds if, me it of? fits Kurt Angle perfectly. I oh think. hell yeah! You know who he reminds me of? Uh, Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, and this guy's a drug He's, kingpin. You, you ever yeah. seen his? He's kind of like like uh, think of like Vincent D'Onofrio in the Daredevil series. You ever seen his wrestling promos? It's like oh yeah, his his, his wrestling career is legendary yeah. in its own right. See, I don't and know. Also, about and wrestling. also his, his Olympic career as well. A gold I mean, medalist. He's a fucking gold medalist. He broke his neck and still wrestled on and won yeah. won the medal. Robert, you're yeah. into wrestling, right? Yeah, I love wrestling, dude. You yeah. wanted to do like a, you were even discussing doing like a collateral wrestling or something, right? Yeah, that <laughs> would be cool. Maybe. I wanted to do a wrestling film because everybody's doing boxing movies, you know? Yeah. Do a wrestling movie? I mean, Mickey Rourke was the last one to do a damn but wrestling I mean, film. You know? Well, there was a wrestling film that came out uh, like fighting with the family. Yeah, that's the story really of Paige and how she lost her career too. Yeah, or yeah. How, so, or how so, her career so, was ended. So supposedly that's actually a pretty uh, critically acclaimed movie. Yeah. But uh, what, like, what was the extent of Kurt Angle's career? Like, uh, what, what was uh, his? Uh, how many championships did he have? Like, what did he? Um, have? he's got probably 13, 14 world titles, and that's wow. in every company. That's IWGP out of Japan. That's, I mean, he's got one of the original WCW belts. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, you know, WWE world champion as soon as he got there, you know, undisputed world champion. Uh, I, I remember when he made his debut on WWE. Yeah. I, I think it was still WWF back in the it day. Was WWF. B- b- before before the lawsuit. That before changed that. the World Wildlife Foundation sued WWE. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had well, they had the copyright first. Exactly. Shit. And his name is John Cena. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 Oh, this yeah. motherfucker. I don't know. I don't know anything about wrestling. The only thing I know is the memes. You can't see me. My <laughs> can't time see is me. now. My time is now. But man, I mean, I I think that has has Kurt Angle done any other movies? Yeah, he like what was that one MMA movie with Tom Hardy? I mean, he's been in acting oh, movies. Oh shit! He was an MMA wrestler in that Tom Hardy movie. Yeah, remember? Oh, was, the Tom Hardy movie. That was it MMA Cage Fighter. Remember? That? I can't. I can't remember the movie. Dude, I don't the, remember the ever seeing that movie. Dude, uh, he was in Pain and Gain. Oh, that's right, man. Along yeah, with, with the uh, Rock, Mark Wahlberg, the Rock, and Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg. Yeah. yeah, Dwayne Johnson, yeah, uh, and uh, Anthony Mackie. Yeah, wow. Yeah. What, oh, what, what, what else? Cool. What else does it say he did? Yeah, the Avenger dude. Yeah, Damn. yeah, Falcon. Yeah, or the new Captain America. The, I should new say. America. <laughs> the, the new, your new Captain America, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, uh, Endgame's been out for this long, so you know, that, that's yeah, okay. That's an that, acceptable that, that's spoiler. An, that's an okay. Yeah, that that's right. My Little Mermaid is black, and so is my Falcon. <laughs> and I am I a Captain America? My Captain America. My Captain America is black. Hell yeah! Our new uh, Black Overlords, right? Uh huh. <laughs> that, that's a reference to some stupid <laughs> internet bullshit. Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't say black. We say minority now. Right? I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> Does the word black offend you? Does the word Mexican offend you? Oh, I'm sorry, Robert. You I are Hispanic. Know. I don't are know. You I, th- I think by the that word, no, the word is not offensive, but most people are ignorant enough to get offended. But uh, just yeah, the, they, just they, the that's word. true. That's what I'm saying. That, <laughs> that is true. There are people that are stupid. So yeah, how to explain that? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, they, they, there are people that even get riled up. People listening to hearing Spanish. But, yeah, but that, that that's neither here nor there. There we go. Okay, we're getting <laughs> off topic here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, back to chasing Molly. Of course, I mean Kurt Angle was great in it, and it has a nerd icon in this movie. She plays the. Uh, girlfriend of the main uh, lead male character atticus uh that's felicia day yeah i mean she's natural she's in supernatural i mean i, th- I think she was on she was on buffy wasn't she was she um, uh, i could swear that she did buffy she did. supernatural yeah. was great man i mean mm-hmm. jeez a- ash do you have it the on libraries, the libraries i have it up on IMDb. i'm not sure if she was in the librarians because that was a spinoff of the supernatural show. yeah yeah 
And I know that she's the new uh, Dr. Forrester on the new Mystery Science Theater 3000, yeah. which yeah. is awesome. That I is, love it. That is cool. So Mystery yeah. Science Theater 3000, Supernatural. What else were you looking for? Um, I don't remember what, what else I was for? looking for. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Buffy? Was, was she, she in Buffy? Yeah. Was, was she in that, Buffy? Was it that girl from American Pie that was in Buffy? Right, that redhead? Um, I, th- I think that, so. That, that's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Hmm. Yeah, I may be confused. I mean, yeah. m- m- Miss Day, I'm completely sorry if I've confused your filmography or anything. Your hot redheadness, yeah. yeah. Oh, come uh, on. No, we love you. She is hot. We, 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 do, we do love you. We love our awesome nerd icons on this podcast. I don't see Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Okay, so She's I guess, I, I guess I'm Ameri- mistaken. It's then. the American Pie Girl. <laughs> it's the, yeah, that's the American Pie Girl I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's, that's really, really stupid. Sorry. <laughs> I, I feel ashamed. No, I, I failed. No, you're good. You're fine. I failed. I, I, I'm a failure. No. God damn it. No. <laughs> Is there anyone else that <laughs> stands out? Anyone else that stands out? Jesus Christ. Uh, the uh, pawn shop guy. The pawn shop guy is amazing. Pawn shop. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, he, he he's uh, focused so much on being a uh, expert on everything pawn star style that oh, he doesn't even know how to haggle. The guy Rick from Pawn Stars, he's doing a uh, Steve Carell thing. Yeah, and it, yeah, he's uh, bidding what, higher what than he should that? be. That was a oh, what was that Steve Carell movie? Hmm. Oh. Dinner for Schmucks. Dinner for Schmucks. That's what it was. Yeah. Remember, remember when he was negotiating with Paul Rudd? Oh, when he hit yeah. him with the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's right. Uh, what Five dollars. What Ten. about the monk? That was an awesome scene. That was so out of left field, but also so hilarious because you know, <laughs> I mean, Molly is just such a. In, in many ways, she's like a straight man type of character, like straight man or straight woman type of yeah. character. You know, it's like she's just the foil for everybody. You know, you know, oh, what, you know what's and, funny, and she's. She's very much the foil for crazy characters like uh, the, the the monk, you know, and 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 the, the weapon he ends up giving her. Oh my god! <laughs> Are we lo- should we should we even mention the casting couch scene? I mean, that, I, that's, I don't that, know. That's funny. I mean, I, that, that, I guess that I'll just funny. say that that's funny. And I mean, they do bring up the girl in that. You know, there's, you? there is a Pawn Star episode with Steve Carell. I don't know if you wanted to see that. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? <laughs> Steve Carell's and that, in Pawn that's Stars? That's what I'm bringing up. So he's wearing his glasses, oh, no. and they don't know it's Steve Carell. Oh, and God. then he's haggling with him back and forth. You see that? <laughs> why, are we, why are we bringing this up? On because it? it's the haggling bit back and forth. It's freaking funny. Yeah, like, but the audience can't hear that, Robert. No, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But I'm trying to show Bo what I'm talking about, because... That's where that comes from. Yeah, well, we'll we'll, we'll look at that some. some of the whatever. Though. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, um, <laughs> it, it, it looks apparently it looks fun, apparently, funny, apparently you don't know comedy, so whatever. Oh, I don't know comedy. Oh. Apparently you guys don't know comedy. Shots I fired. showed you food fight, motherfucker. That shit was funny. That shit is funny. That I could, shit is I, hilarious. I could not stop laughing, and I I barely started the movie. <laughs> I watched it just to listen to the episode, you know. Oh wow! Uh, that you guys did because that was before I jumped on, yeah. and and yeah, that shit was. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that, that's one thing that I could say with full certainty. Full certainty, Chasing Molly is leagues better than that shit. <laughs> oh yeah, no this this, this movie, movie is, is superlative. It's like, great, seriously. yeah, yeah. It was really really good. I, it was really funny, and and I'm not sure if it really misses a beat. Um, I mean. Did did you have any any issues with it? Were there any plot concerns or? I'm not not entirely. I mean, I I don't really know. I mean, I'm not going to say that it was perfect. It, it's just I don't know. Maybe I just didn't really see a whole lot of flaws in it. But yeah, there wasn't really any flaws because everything was played for laughs. Yeah, everything's played for laughs. I mean, it's a movie that definitely kind of takes itself seriously, but doesn't at the same time. You can, you can tell of. everybody's had an impl- you, improv class. Yeah, two. and you can also tell that a lot of people were having fun yeah. making this movie. And that that that's that's key. A movie like this, I mean, if the actors are having fun, that's, that's what I want to try to do. Yeah, that, I mean, that that really translates well into the final product, and it looks like this was a blast to make. Yeah, you, you know who else was an interesting character too was Spanx. Spanx, oh my god, <laughs> I don't I don't know where the fuck they found that guy. Like, and, does he have previous credits? Like, is he uh, E R Ruiz? Okay, so I have the Ruiz? IMDb or Ruiz. Ruiz. Ruiz, yeah. Um yeah. he has the I have the IMD, IMDb page pulled up. Yeah. Um let's see. Uh American American Sniper. Oh, he was an American Sniper. Oh, yeah. interesting. Was the that Bad Batch Sons of wow. Anarchy? Yeah. Oh, wow. Happy Face. 
That's cool. That wow. Works. He's yeah. He's been in some interesting uh, projects before. Was yeah. that that wasn't his actual face? Was that just makeup or? I don't know. No, that's uh, his face. That's him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow, that that that's cool. I mean, he, he yeah, he was interesting in his own right in this movie. Very interesting. Yeah, he was in a house fire as a oh, child. Oh wow, that's what happened. That's but that's cool that he actually like. But you know, he he has a career. I mean, he, he's an oh, actor. Of course, yeah. That's awesome to turn like a physical disability something that like normally people don't want to see. Like what others would think as imperfections in actors and so, yeah. I don't know that's kind of inspiring no, yeah, pe- that's the best actors I mean you didn't, I'll show you some yeah, pe- people, people, people can, do that yeah people can be ignorant about disabled no, actors as yeah, well fuck. you know they can be they can be ignorant pretty ignorant you know yeah I mean yeah um, and then the only other, I guess, interesting characters of note I can think of were the uh, the Cholos yeah and the, the cho- gang the Cholos were what great the f- no sorry and, and, and then they just made references to like movies, like they were straight up movie nerds. Yeah, yeah they, they were like, uh, "Hey, what was it about hum- about movie night?" And it's like, they, he's they like, "Paul Blart Two Mall Cop was a more well developed <laughs> movie or something." Yeah. But then he was just like, "No, we should have watched Magic Mike XXL." Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like what? The which part, is that's a legitimate <laughs> movie. That's that's Steven Soderbergh, man. Soderbergh's <laughs> a legitimate director, man. He's done some good auteur like shit. Uh. Like, check out Contagion. That's actually a good movie. And also, uh, what was the, what was the one about the prescription pills? I think it was. I don't remember what it was called, mm. but yeah, Steven Soderbergh has made some good movies, and it it that that scene was really interesting, though, man. Yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah, uh, every time they were on screen was was on fun, which is a couple of times. Um, and then, yeah, just just the you have all you have this this story going along, and it kind of have a has a stream of consciousness vibe to it um yeah, yeah. but everything is a continuous plot everything is one thing leading to another a couple side stories and then it all culminates and i mean i don't want to spoil it but like it's kind of yeah. deus ex machina isn't it it's the a little ending. bit of a deus ex, deus ex machina at the end but even so i mean it still ties the movie together but that's the point like know? i think that was very intentional you know what yeah, i mean it does um and deus ex machina is usually seen as like a, as a plot fallacy but in some cases you know especially in a movie that's not necessarily taking itself seriously i mean it, it can be done intentionally and and it can work and in this this case you know it it's works. played for laughs yeah. that's why you can't find flaws in this i mean it, it's played for laughs you know how do yeah. you how do you find a yeah, flaw ser- seriously, something like in, that? In, in many ways it even points out some of the, the flaws and continuity that's stuff art. Somewhat. it's self-aware that's what it I'm is saying. self-aware it's art because some of it's probably not even scripted yeah know, it's just going off the cuff and yeah exactly you know? i'd like to know how much of that was improvised yeah that's, that's real accurate. a lot of it ha- yeah a lot of it has a real improvised feel and it, it was really really like i mean none of it was uh off point man i mean it was all like just right on yeah now i know that we actually got excited about doing this movie because we found out that uh, some of the the crew were involved in some like some high high budget stuff, right? Yeah. The yeah. director Josh Sutherland actually did sound uh, or uh, special effects for the Avengers, the original wow, Avengers wow. movie. Wow! Okay. Really? Yeah. That's really cool. I remember we talked about this. Yeah. Um, when you first brought it up, um, and we were first approached to do Chasing Molly. Yeah, we we were approached a while I ago. Automatically saw Kurt Angle, and I was like, okay. Yeah, it's got uh-huh. Kurt Angle. Yeah. yeah, and then it's got it's directed by, uh, like we said, Josh Sutherland. Um, he also did. Uh, he was, vis- was visual effects. Right to say visual effects on the Avengers. Also, uh, Looper and Escape Plan, which were blockbuster really? movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Looper. Yeah, yeah. That was the Bruce Willis time Bruce, travel movie. Bruce Willis and uh, Joseph Gordon Levin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like digital Joseph Gordon Levin all over Bruce Willis' face. I right? I, n- I never really saw that movie though. It was like Joseph Gordon Levin. Half face, and then Bruce Willis's mouth when he was younger. It was, it was it was weird. That's weird. Time loop is like it was chasing his younger self. Time traveling. That's crazy, bro. I think you gotta I see remember that. that. You yeah. gotta see that. It's, I didn't watch it. But. It's like Inception or something, dude. You gotta watch that. Wow. So, what do you think about the actual writing in this movie? What do you think of the script? Um, I think it all flows together. I I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, I was entertained. I was la- I was laughing. Um, like you said, you you don't really keep track of the time i mean it goes by quickly yeah, yeah. And, and and obviously it must have allowed for some improvisation well it, it's you know, you know? It's, it's really got that feel of you know uh what's that one movie oh god damn it <laughs> we, yeah that one movie 
<laughs> it's always that one movie. It's always right? that one right. movie. Go, it's always something else. Yeah. God what damn is it. it? Uh, the Three Guys in Vegas. I forgot about that. Oh. The Hangover? Hangover. The Hangover series. It's like, what's going to happen next? You just want to watch the next subplot to the, the next. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. It, it kind of has that vibe to it. That one movie yeah. with the hair in the face and the, the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. Demon Cleaners, Cleansing House, Body and Soul. If they said we'll be back, then they'll definitely be back. Where is the doll now? Guestimate. Did the doll ask you to play a game? Never say yes to a doll's game. Was it like a ooh? Or more like, your mother sucks in hell. Okay, the first one. Okay, great. We had this incident the other night. <laughs> See my face, kid. You're already dead. No. I can't see. It's not like anyone got murdered here. You see my mother's teapot? I stashed the last bit of pills in there. We're gonna be waterboarded. I am not a strong swimmer. Atticus, where are you? Great story, Molly. I'm in a bit of a predicament. Sus huevosis. A fuerte y grande y limpia. You saying it has strong, big, clean balls? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What the hell are you doing? It's, uh, you've never heard of a honey facial? Have you ever seen a bee with a wrinkle? No. No. Got it. Not. You know, pearls are uh, the gossip girls of the sea. You uh, hold one up to your ear, you can hear sounds from the ocean. I think you mean seashells? No, no, no. Pearl's gonna tell you things a seashell won't. I got three different kids from three different women. Get me pregnant and leave. What's your name, sweetheart? Melanie Mellon. No. The name your poor excuse for parents gave you. Trinity. All right, you never had a chance, did you? Rodney's ready to get great food. Peter Pan you. What's being Peter Pan? It's when you play with a stinker bell until he flies. Uh, Ash, what are, you, what are you looking at? I was actually looking through our conversation to see, like, there was, there was some stuff we had noticed right about the movie before we even watched it. Yeah. Now, I was looking through our group chats to kind of go back to that to see if there was anything that was... Um, I don't. I don't think we really talked a whole lot about it because I mean Dakota was real excited. I wish Dakota could have been here. Yeah, that would have been great to have him yeah, here. Your brother's, your brother's missing out. Dude. He got really excited about about it. I remember. But he but he just got he got uh, sick. And he got sick. That's yeah. okay. He's just our unpaid intern. Yeah. <laughs> the unpaid intern. I think we're all unpaid interns yeah, in this think, podcast by this point. Unpaid, but I yeah. guess I guess you guys just just thought it was cool. You had uh, Shelley and you had Kurt Angle. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then yeah. the Josh Sutherland uh, was the the visual effects on those movies. Yeah, man. I mean, that that's really, really awesome. Uh, Escape Plan. That was the one with Stallone. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Oh, that prison movie. Yeah, a little prison escape movie. But yeah, so this guy has actually been in in some you know high high dollar things, high budget movies. Yeah. But um, this is his directorial de debut. And 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 it's and it's a perfect avenue for that type of debut. Like you're doing doing a comedy like this. I mean, obviously you're not seeing a whole lot of comedies like this coming out in the theaters. You know, I mean, the ones that do. I mean, a lot of them aren't really even half as good as this one. Really. No, and and in some ways this kind of feels low budget for some reason, uh, uh, but yet um, it it. I don't know where I'm going with this. But <laughs> <laughs> it does, but it doesn't. I don't know. It feels like an Amazon Prime TV show more than anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has it's that. It's good enough. It has that low budget feel, but and I don't mean that in a bad way. No, no not not, a, a, not, not at, all. at all. Not at all. Like to me, that's what makes it really charming and really fun. That's I guess that's what I'm trying it. to say. That, that's what uh, workaholics is. You yeah. know what I mean, I mean, you you could tell that they did a lot a lot more with less. Mm -hmm. You know, workaholics, it was very, sunny Philadelphia. All yeah, of that, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It definitely has that kind of vibe of humor. You know. Humor, TV show quality, kind of, kind of ra raunchy, yet you know, also really likable. And yeah. that's what's good about, I guess, the the low budget vibe is that you can do that. You you can have this uh, no holds barred comedy. You can have um, no fucks given, and you don't yeah. see that in a lot of the corporate movies. You know what I mean? I and mean, that's what makes you know indie indie movie special in particular. Vulgar comedy is what it mostly is. Yeah. Yeah. I you know and um obviously this is an independent film yeah. yeah but um at times I mean I could see this being a theatrical film it would have been awesome to see this in the theaters honestly except except that you know a lot of times you don't see I this think, kind of humor I think you could 
pull like a few seasons out of this movie, actually. Like like a few seasons of television. Yeah, exactly. This, this could be like a Netflix series, Comedy right? Central. It could, it Netflix, could be Amazon Prime. Yeah, uh, Comedy Central more than anything. They'll probably buy them, right? Yeah, give, prob- give them a contract. Probably. I mean, I would I would like to think so, but who who knows? You yeah. know, maybe maybe Miss Pack will write another <clears throat> movie or something. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. Since this is a indie review, we're going to wrap things up a little earlier than normal. We typically do shorter episodes for these types of movies. Yeah, yeah because we, we run between 30 and 45. Yeah. Nothing, nothing personal. So how about we go ahead and give our final thoughts and just give a, a little rating to this movie. Like, we'll start with you, Ash. What did you think? Um, I would definitely recommend the movie. I think you should yeah. watch it. Um, well, depending on what kind of an audience you are, I guess. But if you listen to Collateral Cinema, you'll enjoy this. You put this on in front of your family, so how did they feel? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Don't put this on in front of your family, okay? Don't put this on in front of your grandmother, because, I mean, yeah, there's some raunchy humor, but obviously, if you're listening to us, I mean, you don't have an issue with that. Yeah. (laughs) God damn it. It would have been amazing if they saw the skull fuckers. (laughs) God. That would have been incredible. I'm really glad they didn't. Um, That would have been the best thing ever. That would have been essential family watching. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I can taste the tip was bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can taste the tip. But um, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, this was really interesting. I was really surprised. I, I think I came into this with lower expectations than what than what I got. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I laughed the entire time. I thought I thought it was great. Right on. So you recommend it. I recommend it straight up. Right on. All right, Robert. I recommend it as well. And if you're an improv guy and if you do want to sort of update your comedy, I guess watch this film because it'll sort of do wonders for you. Your, <laughs> yeah. your, your imagination. And I give it, see, a five out of five rating, I give it a 10. Oh, nice. And put that, <laughs> I mean, it's, I think it's good enough. Dude. Are we doing ratings? I think we do oh, that we're in doing our right? Yeah, we do do ratings. Oh, we do, we do, we do uh, five out of five, right? Yeah. So you, you're going to give it a five out of five? I'm going to give it a ten. Oh. You're going to give it a ten <laughs> out of a five out of five. I'll give it a there four out of five just because, um, I mean, obviously it's not a perfect movie, and I don't know if it does that extra wow, you know, yeah. to, to give me that extra five stars, but it, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no flaws whatsoever. Um, not not in plain sight, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Maybe I could say four point five out of five, even. You know, I'd I'd give it a solid four. I mean, I I really really I really like the cast and I like the characters. They're all well, they're 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 all well thought out characters, and and they're cast perfectly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody fits their role. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And you could tell the actors had fun with it. That's what I wanted to say. Oh, the, exactly. I mean, yeah, it, they had fun doing this. You could tell they got into their characters. That's and what I was gonna say. Even though it's low budget, all of the characters, um, all the actors, really um, did their put their all into their performances. Yeah, and, and you and you have to respect that. I mean, in so many ways. I mean, to to get a film like this out there and to get people like you know Felicia Day and Josh Sutherland and Carrot Angle and all of them, like I mean that. I mean, I, it, it, I'm sure that it was pretty difficult to pull off in some ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure maybe in other ways it wasn't, but... I mean, Kurt Angle's officially retired now. I mean, yeah, he's retired from wrestling yeah. now. Yeah. So acting is a natural outlet for him. Yeah, I mean, he's good enough. I mean, his promos, oh. he's done other movies. and yeah. R- Wrestling's all fake anyway, right? It's all acting anyway, so isn't it the same thing? Is your acting better than your wrestling? I'm, I'm guessing just talking is wrestling now, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard anyway. I don't, I don't watch wrestling, but they, they say it's supposed to. It's all fake. It's all like acted out or whatever. Leave it up to the imagination, Ash. Hey, K. Phoebe, motherfucker. You got to watch wrestling with us, bro. K. Phoebe. <laughs> Well, we'll do collateral we, wrestling. We nerd out on wrestling, too. And we'll wrestling, do, wrestling is fun. We nerd like, the fuck out, dude. I mean, we love it. <laughs> collateral Cinema yeah. is Bo's project, mainly. But we're all cinephiles, of course. We all love it. Collateral Gaming is mostly my project. Yeah. Scott and I both love gaming. Um, and then, like, Collateral Wrestling could be, like, Robert's project. Oh, yeah. And, and then Dakota's project could be Collateral Television. He's a television guy. He knows television actors everywhere. Well, he, knows he loves new, to be watch new series. Stuff. I mean, anything outside of 2000, that's what he knows. I'm but sorry. <laughs> before we branch out even more, I think we'd probably have to get, make, be, start making money so we yeah. can quit our full time jobs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but in any way, this movie is recommended by Collateral Cinema. You can find this movie on Amazon Prime for rent and for purchase. We highly recommend, like, 
If you're not too sure about it, go ahead and rent it, but we recommend that you buy it. Go ahead and support these filmmakers. Yeah, like, I seriously. agree. Yeah, and I'm sure that if you want to check out a trailer, I think they have one on Vimeo. We're, we're going to put these links in the show notes and everything. And yeah, this is a good movie. Check it out. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like, I, I, I'm i glad that we've come across uh, indie movies that are more or less enjoyable in their own right. You know, like, like I mean, it, it's really kind of given us a lot of good avenues to branch out and talk about movies that other people probably wouldn't be talking about, you know? Exactly. I mean, I don't know of any other podcast talking about this movie. The only ones, probably. So well, far. Well, I that's, mean, that's why we're original, then. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. That's why we stand out. Original, yeah. baby. Speaking yeah. of which, um, you know, Collateral Cinema, we're coming to the end of our season yep. two. Yep. Um, we actually already pre-recorded our episode on The Princess Bride, but we'll be releasing that for yeah. folks um, I, what, I, I will start, next week. Or? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start editing that episode like pretty much right away in the next couple of days or so. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to get started on it. Yeah. I think our normal release time would be next week. Yeah, that's when we would normally be re- we would normally be recording an episode this week. Yeah, so, yeah, we yeah. pre-recorded that, so you know, because of my baby and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, so that's something to look forward to. Season finale on the Princess Bride. Um, you you said you want to do maybe a bonus episode on like an interview or something. Yeah, but we'll go ahead and just uh, leave that at that right now. Okay. Like we're not going to make any announcements on that just yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I can plug Collateral Gaming for just yeah, a second. Yeah, go, go ahead. Um, we are also entering the end of our season. Our season finale is going to be on Spider-Man PS4. Um, according to schedule, I think we should have been releasing that uh, this week, next week, or some, something, but I'm out. But anyway, I, basically, I'm just waiting until like we. I feel like we have time because I have the baby. Yeah. So now, and that's taking up a lot of time, but I basically want us to finish the game. I want Robert to finish so he can be on that episode. Yeah. yeah, play yeah. The game but um, yeah. I want to release that this month, sometime this month okay. in July, right so, so we can kind of still be on the Far From Home craze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got we got to ride that wave. As soon as it was Far From Home. Yeah. yeah. I know, I know what the, far From Home was yeah. awesome, but I'll talk about that on the PS4 episode. Um, the other thing is that because we're releasing an indie episode on this, I want Collateral Gaming to go ahead and release an indie game episode. Okay. Um, our next one was going to be We Happy Few, but I've gone ahead and changed that around, and I believe we're going to do Subnautica. Interesting. So I want to go ahead and try to record that either this week or next week. Okay. And uh, release that out for you guys as well. So look forward to that. Yeah. Um, I think we'll be releasing it probably a week after the Collateral, this episode is out. So Yeah. Check out our Subnautica episode, Spider-Man PS4, and we may have some bonus content as well, and then we're both moving on to new seasons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can't, be... yeah can't wait for season three. Dude. After our break. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. And to all the indie filmmakers out there, we are totally open to reviewing your movie even in between seasons. Just go ahead and hit us up at Collateral Cinema Movie Podcast at gmail.com. Also, if anybody else wants to send us an email and send us a comment on something, maybe something that you heard in one of our episodes, go ahead and hit us up. Once again, Collateral Cinema Movie Podcast, all lowercase, at gmail.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us on Patreon and Podbean Patron. Like we would love to get some patrons coming into the Podbean Patron page. We're going to we're about to release a bunch more commentaries that we've recorded. We like, have the Fire in the Sky. Yeah, we we, we, we need Robert and I did another commentary on the Fire in the Sky. We did it while watching the episode. It was cool. Dude. Yeah. Before Are you going to release the uh, bullet commentary? Yeah, we're going to release all of that. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. We're going to release all of that, and also we're going to be developing low budget late night low which will be late interesting we another spin-off another spin-off which is going to be it's going to be an interesting ride there yes we're just going to jump right, right into it right mystery on mystery science through theater yeah something like that but anyway check out chasing molly and also check us out on apple podcast on spotify we're also on chill lover radio we're on podcoin use the promo code collateral to get 300 pod coins upon registration that's right yeah and also check out our youtube channel we yeah. also yeah we're also on youtube yeah i want to start maybe we can do some uh youtube content on, yeah that, the interim. That, that's what low budget late night's going to be yeah right i yeah. wanted to do some like how to uh you know like mechanic stuff yeah yeah stuff. we could we, we could do something like that maybe if one of you guys were cool that'd be great uh, doesn't matter that'd be great man 
We're going to work well, on your film, Robert. You're gonna oh, we're, we're going to finish all of them. I got yeah, three yeah. more uh, short films I'm going to do. I even kind of made another film, another scary film that I, I, I just kind of want to jump right into. Right on. Right on. Anyway, guys, if you have a low-budget film, doesn't matter if it's three minutes, 12 minutes, 30, 30 minutes, just send it to us. Yeah, we, yeah we, might, we might feature it on low-budget late night. Most festivals don't. Or they get rejected because the films aren't short enough. Yeah. But yeah, send it send it to us. Okay, we'll review it. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Well, that's it for this episode of Collateral Cinema. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegon. And I'm Ashley Chancellor. Watch Chasing Molly, but don't chase Molly. <laughs> yeah, don't definitely. Chase don't chase don't chase Molly, don't chase waterfalls. We are out. Out. Collateral Cinema is an L Company production. All music and movie clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.